Hey guys. Okay, so if you have an A1 style 1911, okay, uh, a GI style, um, maybe this uh, like the Springfield 1911-A1, okay, chances are the front sight on that gun is what is called staked in, okay. Now what that means is it has what holds the front sight in is what's known as a mortise joint. A mortise joint is essentially square hole, square peg, shimmed in, peened in, uh, something, okay? It's a very, very old style joint, joining method. It's a very, very strong style of joint, okay? It's still very widely used in, in masonry and in metalworking and in old school carpentry. Um, it's a really strong way to join two pieces of a material together, okay, and have them not want to come apart. Now, what's different between, say, the front sight on this A1, which is staked in, okay, and the rear sight is the dovetail. There is no dovetail up front, okay. So, what this video is going to cover is removing and replacing a staked in front sight on a 1911. Um, here's the gun that's going to go on. This is a Rock Island Armory uh, officer size. It's a friend of mine's. Uh, he asked me to put new sights on it for him and I said, you know, that'd be a good video. So. Here's the gun, well, here's the slide, okay? And you can see the little slice right there. And here's the new front sight. And you can see right here, this is what's called a tenon. And the long and the short of it is, is the tenon goes into the front, okay? And then on the underside, it gets peened, it gets spread out. That's really all there is to it. It's not terribly hard to do if you have the tools to do it. Now what tools do you need, you ask? Well, it's funny you should ask. Ball peen hammer and a 1911 front sight staking tool. Now, if you only own one 1911 or one 1911 with a staked front sight, it's really, honestly, it's not worth it for you to buy this tool. Okay, so it's a specialty tool. It's only usable for one thing and it's not terribly expensive like this one here from Brown Ells is about 40 bucks so it's not terribly expensive but it's not something if it's something you're only ever going to use once it's probably preferable for you to just take it to a gunsmith and have them do it for you because they're already going to have the tool you're going to pay a little more but in the end you're not going to be buying a tool that you'll never use again that said if you decide you want to do it then by all means, call up Brownells, go on the website, order one of these. Like I said, about 40 bucks, I think. Uh, hopefully, you've got a ball peen hammer sitting around somewhere, okay? If not, Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart, whatever, okay? And some Loctite 620. And that's really it. What we're going to do now is I'm actually replacing both sights on this gun, but there's a million videos out there on how to do a dovetail sight. I don't see any real need to go over it again. I don't see any need to bore you guys with it. So what's going to happen is I'm going to get this front sight in. I'm going to get it set up. And then while it sets up with the Loctite, I'm going to go ahead and install the rear sight. That's going to be done off camera. But the front sight is, is the whole point of this video. So give me a minute to reposition the camera and we'll kind of go from there. Okay, so the easiest way to get the existing front sight off, oh, I need to move that back a little bit so it's in frame. Okay, so it might be a little hard to tell with all the masking tape, but right here is where the existing front sight is on this Springfield gun. Um, the easiest way to get 
a staked on front 1911 sight off is simply to break it off okay so vice grips something similar get a good grip on it maybe put some masking tape over the gun uh, to preserve the finish okay and just start twisting okay there's the front sight now that parts off now what you want to do is grab a punch Grab a punch, and tap that teen on out. Okay, this one's not going to cooperate. So what I'm going to do is take, uh, after the video, I'm going to take and, and grind it out with a Dremel. And don't, Dremels are okay when you're talking about this, okay? Matter of fact, if you buy a front sight from somebody like Dawson or somebody else, okay, they will recommend using a Dremel uh, for part of the prep work for restaking, for taking off and restaking uh, a front sight on a staked in front sight, okay? So... Don't flip out because I'm talking about Dremels. You guys know how I feel about Dremels, but in you know if you're using them correctly, they're invaluable. Okay, so what's going to happen is after I'm done with this project on this gun, the one that I'm actually working on, I'm going to just go ahead and finish doing that myself. Okay, now what it should look like when it's all said and done, and I already have this gun prepped, okay, it should look like that nice neat clean hole okay I don't know if you can see inside this this inside the slide or not hopefully you can you can see where I've prepped it okay so this one is ready to go so the long and the short of it is really really simple okay first I put it in a vise like so okay now I've got blocks of aluminum inside my vice draws. That's what the masking tape is for, uh, to you know not mar up the finish. Now, obviously, you want to make sure before you do anything else, you want to make sure that it fits, and it should fit snug. It shouldn't be too loose, okay? And there's three sizes of tenons, okay? Wide, narrow and mil spec for this gun it just happens to be mil spec if it's a Springfield um, I believe those are kind of like a medium but since nobody really makes medium teen on front sights you got to get a wide and kind of file it down uh, to fit okay so it should fit nice and snug not too loose okay and but there should be just a hair a, you know a little bit of play in it and the reason for that is because we're going to Loctite it. Now for front sights, for any front sight, I always use Loctite 620, okay, which is a retaining compound, okay. For rear sights, I use Loctite 262, which is a thread locker, okay. This stuff is as close to permanent as you can get without actually welding. It's pretty much impervious to all known gun solvents, okay? It's impervious to heat within reason, okay? You can heat it up, if you heat it up hot enough to break the, the bind, you know, the, the, the joining compound, but through normal use in a gun, it's, uh, it's gonna be just fine. The other part is that it's, it's thicker than uh, normal Loctite, which is good because it helps to fill in gaps and crevices. So, what we're going to do is we are going to put just a dab around the Tenon.
You don't want to use too much because then you're gonna you got some cleanup afterwards um, to make sure that it doesn't lock your gun up because I've seen it happen. A little bit of Loctite gets in the slide and it locks up the action and it's, it's not fun. And drop it in. Now I'm going to take a piece of masking tape and put it over the site and I'll explain why. The reason I'm putting the masking tape over the site is to hold it onto the slide, okay? So that when I flip the gun over, after I've given the Loctite time to set up, when I flip it over and start peening on it with the staking tool, it's got some place to go. What I also do is I take just basically a piece of leather and I put it in the vise. So now it's got something very, very sturdy and it's not going to go anywhere, okay? So now what's going to happen is I'm going to go ahead and install the rear sight on this gun, give this time to set up, and I'll see you guys here in a few minutes. Okay guys, so the way this works, the way the tool is designed, this is, uh, well I mean it's steel, it's hardened steel, tempered steel uh, bar stock with a much harder what's called a swage tip. And it's just like anything else when you're peening something, okay? The way this is designed, what this is designed to do is to hit that teen on and spread it out, okay? So the way it goes in, it's just like this in the front of the gun, down, okay? And then and then you just keep doing that until it spreads out, okay? You don't have to hit it hard. You don't have to wallow. You, know, you don't have to wall around it. You don't have to do a whole bunch to it. You just take it nice and slow. Whenever you're doing something like this, you want to go in in small steps. Okay, you don't ever want to take a big giant leap because when that happens, mistakes get made. And when you're working with metal, a lot of times a mistake is permanent. Okay, so that's really it, guys what it's going to end up looking like when it's done just like that and now you have, well in this case you have a, a nice fiber optic, uh, green fiber optic front sight on this little uh, officer size 1911 okay uh, the other thing you want to make sure you do is after you're done swaging it, after you're done peening it you want to make sure to take a Dremel tool and grind any anything that's hanging down to where it'll get hung up on the barrel or if it's a full-size gun, a barrel bushing. You want to make sure that everything fits. So you're going to have to take a Dremel tool and you're going to have to grind a little bit, okay? Not a whole lot, but just enough to make sure everything fits the way it should again. Um, I guess that's it. So. Uh, RichGunTortureTest.com, and uh, we'll see you later.